So um, what we're doing right now, Kathy Sipple, social media trainer with Powerful with a bunch of our authors on the line on launch day. We're really excited for the launch of Heal Thyself. And Carrie has great online presence, but people who are friends with her on Facebook don't unfortunately know how to very easily access her, her you know, Facebook page. So a few things that you could do, Carrie, would you be willing to show your screen and kind of drive if I guide you through it? Um, yes, uh, but you're going to have to walk me through how to do that. I will do that. I'll resume. Okay, so we weren't able to use Carrie as an example, but I'm going to go ahead and make myself a little bit of a guinea pig. <laughs> the whole idea today is that we want to make sure that we're, we're doing this little checklist of all kinds of things you can do to optimize your brand and the awareness about the book. So first thing you might see when you get to my own personal Facebook profile today is I've got the very nice icon that Sue and Kathy made for us each with our chapter. I've got that as my profile pic. You don't have to do it, but I think it's you know a good idea to do. I've got the, the cover image updated uh, you know, with that today. And then another thing I think that is a good idea to do is to go into your about section and just make sure if somebody's curious about you and they want to get to know your business self, how accessible are you? If it just says self-employed, that doesn't really, you know, allow people to get to your website or to your, you know, professional self. So as you can see, I've got mine kind of all tricked out here. I've got um, all kinds of links over here in just my general about section. I've got the mysocialmediacoach.com. I've got you know, another website that I own. I've got my Facebook, my social media coach, my LinkedIn, my personal blog, all kinds of stuff. So you can definitely do all of that. The other thing that's a great idea is just to go into your work and education area. And if you don't have, if you don't have a Facebook page, then, you know, you may or may not want to create one at this point. That's kind of a different discussion. But for those of you who have Facebook pages, go ahead and do an add a workplace and then you can go ahead and, and type in, you know, that, um, that page that you owned, that you own, excuse me. So Kathy Sipple and Associates, that's a Facebook page that I hadn't previously connected to my, you know, personal profile. It's a relatively new, new page that I created. Go ahead and put in, you know, your, your title. You can put in a little description. If you've had it for quite some time and you just haven't gotten around to it, you can backdate, you know, the year. I'll go ahead and put the year that I started the business. And then if you still work there, put it to present, that's fine. And then I can go ahead and save these changes. In that way, anybody who comes to my uh, about page will be able to at least know that that's, that's the page and that they could, um, that they could connect with me that way. I don't necessarily want to share that as a, a news feed update right now since we're sharing so many more important things today. The idea is really to do this. I, I covered this slightly before. It's to link all of your digital selves together in a more strategic way. We don't know where somebody's going to slip into our, you know, our digital world, but why make it any harder than it has to be for somebody to get to know us on another platform. If they meet me on Facebook right here, make sure you've got a way for them to connect to your blog or website. And I think that your blog or website should always be the mothership. That should always be a way that connects, you know, one platform to another and also, um, you know, should be able to be connected to from these various other social media sites. The other thing that we did before was to take a look at how to, um, tighten up Twitter. For any of you that are on Twitter, you can go ahead and view your profile and just do this quick check. I think a lot of people do consume tweets, you know, on their phones. I'm not that concerned about changing my, you know, cover image here on Twitter. I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, leave that alone. But I did go ahead and update my Twitter bio with author of, you know, Heal Thyself and acknowledging that it launches today. I went ahead and tucked a little shortened link into my Twitter bio so that people could get right to the Amazon page there. And then I've gone ahead and I've, um, you know, looked for 
a lot of the other authors and given them some likes and retweets and things like that. If I click on this heal thyself uh, hashtag, this will be another good way that we can see who's given us some, some love and who else is, is using that hashtag. So that's a fun way to do it. Uh, I see some familiar you know, faces and names, so that's, that's a cool thing. Those are just two ways that you can do it. We also quickly talked about LinkedIn. That's more of a business to business type of thing, but an, an easy and kind of long lasting way that you can help promote the book and brand you is to go into your LinkedIn profile, edit that, and come down to way, way, way down to the bottom, past the skills, way, way down here to accomplishments. And you can click that little plus sign next to accomplishments and you can actually add a publication. So, you know, you can go ahead and just type in Heal Thyself, Powerful You as the publisher, put in today as the publication date. And then another cool thing that we talked about, kind of bonus tips, is putting in the Amazon link right here, putting in the description, which you can copy and paste right from Amazon, or you can kind of craft something that's particular to your chapter. And then a, a neat way that ties you to other authors, I would be somewhat strategic about who you connect to in this regard. Um, pick some authors that you really resonate with or that you think are trying to perhaps, you know, cultivate an audience that's similar to you without competing with you. Because if they accept this link to be displayed on their uh, profile, what that will do is make you forever visible potentially to that author's network. So that's a great boost for your personal brand. I've already added that, so I'm not going to go ahead and add that right now. Let me just pause and see if there are any questions or any other ideas that you guys have around uh, these three different ways of sharing. I have a question about um, how you said you linked to other authors. Are you saying other like famous authors or just authors of like um, that you know, like other authors, authors from this book? From from I'm this book. Sure. Yes, from this oh, book. Oh, okay. Mm hmm Yeah, so if I go so when in, you say... Uh, go ahead. So, like, when you, 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 you said, like, when we put our... How does... How, how will we know if they accept our... Um, is it a invitation for them to connect to our book on, on Amazon or something? I'm not sure... I understand what you mean. Okay. Well, people can always decide they don't want it displayed on their profile. So it's almost like on Facebook where you say display on my timeline or not. You tagging oh, okay. them is not going to like force it onto somebody's page, you know, so they have override oh. capabilities. In order to okay. add another author, you do have to be connected to them, you know, already. Okay, so oh, okay. Uh, like I guess I don't think I'm connected to Kathy on here. Um, I, I just picked a few people that I already was, you know, connected to. So I think I connected to Crystal. Yeah, there's Crystal. And anybody, you know, that I'm connected to on LinkedIn, I'm happy to add you as well, or you can do this on your own. But I'll go ahead and, and just show you. Uh, you do have to have a link to that person on LinkedIn to have them populate, you know, this field for you. You're not going to be able okay. to do it if you're not connected. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I just, um, I, I haven't, well, never mind about me. This, I just was trying to clarification. Thank you for that. Sure. And then just, you know, recap of some of the types of posts that we have thought were fun and engaging in addition to the many, many bountiful <laughs> ideas that um, Sue and Kathy have created for us here in the, you know, tools launch area on the author's resource page. You know, some effective ones, if you've got your book, I think a lot of people have their books en route if you don't have them already, is to take a picture of the page that has your chapter and your name and post that to your various social platforms. I know Sue and Kathy have volunteered to take a picture for anybody who doesn't get their books today. But that's just a really neat thing, especially if you're a first time author to see your name in print for the first time, you know, just give a little slice of life. You know, that's a great Instagram update, something that you can do right from your you know, phone and post it. And then what I did just uh, about a half hour ago is I took a screenshot 
of where we are climbing up the ranks on Amazon. We were currently at number 10 in one category. And it's just kind of fun to see, you know, who are we budding up against? You know, who's ahead of us? Who's next to us? Um, I have Snagit, which makes that screen capture really easy for me. But you can do anything with like a print screen. Any kind of screen capture will work. Just another little energy audit check is I like to just instead of saying find it on Amazon, give them the link, you know, make it super easy for them to take that next step and to buy the book. So that's one thing that we've done. Um, we've got some, you know, a little bit of love going around that. And then um, another little, you know, power tip that I had mentioned, again, as a way to give your Facebook page some love is instead of posting everything immediately to your profile, is sometimes to go to your Facebook page, post there first, and then share, you know, to your profile because your profile page gets a lot more traction than your business page. The algorithms within Facebook, I hate to tell you this, but it only gives you maybe like 5% visibility of anything that you post on your business page is going to be seen by the people who have liked that page. A lot of reasons for that. I'm not, you know, hating on Facebook because of it. It's still free traffic. But a way that you can boost the, out of that algorithm is just to start it there and then post to your, you know, personal. So that's another thing that we did. We've done a lot this morning. We've been kind of busy. And then this was the first thing that I did uh, of the day. I said, you know, wow, it's only 7 a.m. We're already at number one on the hot new releases. You know, just kind of giving people the, the traction of how we're doing throughout the day reminding them that they're going to get the free bonus gifts and again you know with the amazon link so again feel free to take anything that i've done here you can you know right click on an image if you like it um let me just demo that real quick if you like an image that i've shared you can just go you know make that image big on your screen click down on it so that's the only image there right click and then you can save that image to your own you know desktop upload it do whatever you wish with it or you can just, you know, simply share it to your own, you know, your own profile. So a lot of tips, a lot of things going on. Let me just pause again and see if there's any questions. Hey, Kathy, I'm trying to go back on LinkedIn and add to the book, but I can't find where to add it. Okay, I'll be happy to, to refresh you on that. If you're on your profile, you're gonna to need to scroll way, way, way down. It's past experience, past educations, past skills, yeah. past recommendations to accomplishments. Okay, let me see if I find I have that. Let me know when you find accomplishments. Any luck? No, the last place where it brings me is interest. It has featured skill and endorsement. Okay, it'll be above interest, presuming they haven't made your experience different than mine, which they do sometimes, unfortunately. So try scrolling up just a little bit from interest. It should be right above that. Above experience? Hmm. Okay. You know what you may need to do is you may need to add a new section. That might be our issue. Do you okay. have a big blue button that says add new profile section? Yeah. Okay. Take a look at that yeah. and see if you can add an accomplishments uh, section. Yeah, I can. So okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. That's, that was the missing step. So go ahead and add that. And, you know, think about what else, you know, you do. I'm sure you have all kinds of projects, certifications, things like that. That accomplishments area can really be a key way that you can differentiate, you know, yourself from others with similar experience. Yep, okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to know what somebody else's terrain looks like if you haven't taken those same steps. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Great question. Any other questions? All right, since I'm recording, I'm just gonna give you guys a really quick um, summary of a few other pro tips that we talked about. One, since I know that 
so many people on this call and my co-authors here and pretty much everybody powerful you attracts, I think are heart-based professionals, heart-based marketers. Sometimes it can be really hard to talk about ourselves, but when we feel like we're helping people, that makes it easier. So this is a free tool that I had offered up to you guys to help you with that objective. Makemypersona.com helps you get in the head of that prospect that you're trying to reach and it is a little bit more aligned with you know a business to business type of professional but you can still use that same idea or strategy with this tool some of the language just isn't going to quite fit once you do that just know that you can create another one and another one and another one but by speaking to somebody specifically rather than trying to be too generic or vanilla you're actually going to be able to connect with that audience you know much better doesn't mean that's the only type of person that you can serve, but just going deep into one type of client that you can help instead of saying, you know, women 35 to 60 with income of, you know, such and such, like really putting a face on it, I think unlocks our hearts and, and really helps us know if our marketing is speaking to them or if we're, we're just, you know, blasting. Um, so another pro tip is once you do that and you have a good idea about who that is that you're speaking to, this is a totally free thing that you can do on um, LinkedIn. You can actually do updates on LinkedIn that have much more staying power beyond just a standard update called a post. Post is the typical run of the mill thing, but if you want to do something that's a little bit more akin to a blog post, you can actually write an article for LinkedIn and they'll distribute it beyond just the people that you're connected to. Big if here is if they can figure out who your target market is that aligns with a professional you know, title. So it does take some reverse engineering, but I think very, very well worthwhile. I've seen people you know, put some time and effort into this and get tens of thousands of new views for their post, okay? So if you try to just do the same post, you know, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, you're not going to get the traction. It does take, you know, really reverse engineering it, um, solving people's pain points, you know, kind of telling LinkedIn through your very intentional use of wording who it is that that's for. That's another great pro tip. And then another free tool that we started out with was Canva. Um, if you want to kind of build out some social shares that start either with what Kathy and Sue have given us or just, you know, create something completely new. This is a free tool where you can upload your own images. You can uh, create your own things from scratch, all kinds of great stuff. And this is basically free with some upgrades, you know, available. So you can, you know, do some really beautiful things there that you can share on social media or on your website. So let me just stop again and see if we've got additional questions. Okay, it's Carrie again. What was that tool that you used to create a persona that you were trying to talk to? Is that located on LinkedIn or is that? No, nope. yeah, it, it's that a one? completely separate resource. It's made possible by a company called HubSpot, but the domain okay. name to get there, the URL is called makemypersona.com. So it's www make, you know, like create my my persona, just like person with an A on the end, dot com. Okay, perfect. Thank you. But I, I know this can really get confusing. I'm throwing a lot out there at you. And I, I just, you know, discover great tools that frankly, a lot of these things are free. A lot of these ideas you could probably get for free online somewhere, but it's the stringing them together and doing it in an effective, you know, intentional way is where I think I kind of build some value to help make sure that you're not just spending time on online on social media, but really driving toward an objective. You know, that that's really obviously okay. what I try to do with you. And the other thing is once you create a persona there and do you write the article in this platform and then paste it elsewhere or does this already connect to um, you you connect your um, media pages to this platform and once you write something it goes wherever it's supposed to go or you want it to go yeah make my persona is a standalone tool that really just helps you delve the inner you know mental state of your persona that you're trying to reach so that's pretty much a standalone 
thing that doesn't automatically connect to anything. It's just something that you would, you know, download, print out. But when you go to create, you know, let's say a blog post or you go to create an article on LinkedIn, you would, you would take that out and say, okay, what did I find out about that prospect? What is their pain point? You know, how can I contextualize this article that I'm writing through the lens of what they care about? You know, I think that's how good marketers cut through the clutter is by empathizing with what do people need from you, not just what's easy to copy paste and just say, you know, things that would be a lot more welcome would be articles that actually solve their issue that make it about them, not so much about us. Okay, and then, okay, so once you get the information about who you are speaking to, you have to take that information and translate it into something that LinkedIn will pick up on in order to share the information that you want to share. Is exactly. that right? Exactly. And the way that I'm suggesting you do that for maximum exposure is by taking the time to write an article versus a post. When, when you do that, if it's easy for LinkedIn to ascertain who it is that this article was written for, like, let's just say it's for visionary CEOs that have lost their vision, you know, and you've got a way to coach top executives, you know, back to their heartfelt, you know, why about their business, something like that. Um, you could put a beautiful cover graphic right here. You could even include, you know, hopefully when we've got that number one bestseller or whatever, you could say, here I am, you know, Carrie, number one bestselling author of this book that, you know, addresses this issue, you know, so that's how you kind of insert the book and positioning yourself as an expert. You can kind of do that all visually here. And then the headline is, um, you know, visionary or, you know, CEOs, CEO burnout. I don't know. I'm kind of making this up as I go. Right. But, no, that's fine. Yeah, okay. It's, okay. it's real and I can help something like that um, okay. or, or and help help is available to restore you know your passion or something like that I would say if you make it less overtly salesy about I can help but you know things like lists you know this is a really good exercise to think about what would you grab if you're in the grocery store checkout line you've only got you know like a minute or two, but you might flip open that magazine that says five top things that you need to know about such and such. That's a great, you know, headline, anything that's catchy. Um, so instead of help is available, let's just say five top tips to, you know, restore your passion, recharge your battery, you know, get you to your next vision, whatever. And then you, you, you know, deliver, what you promised them. You could say, um, you know, CEOs face challenges and often, you know, have no peers to connect with. Uh, consulting with an outside expert can help, you know, bring that clarity or bring that confidence or whatever. You know, these are five top situations that typical CEOs face. And then, you know, once, once you kind of offer your, you know, little mini help at the end, you can say, um, you know, Kari is a number one best-selling uh, author and a sought after, you know, executive you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not remembering everything that you do. So I'm kind of making no, don't. <laughs> Well, the, so my next question was, I operate in the adult survivor of childhood abuse um, category. Yeah. So right now I'm remembering be, that I'll probably, I'll probably be in those groups that specifically cater to that on link on LinkedIn more than I'm going to be on the front page of because that's not the thing that people want to open LinkedIn and see, oh, childhood abuse survivor, number one tip for, you know, getting through it. You know, they're not going to see that when they first open LinkedIn. They have to go looking for it. 
Right. And it, so, is, it is hard for me in a group session to really, you know, tease this out for all the specifics. So I'm kind of giving you some okay. general ideas and then I'm going to need right. you to kind of take the baton and run with it. Or, you know what, right. hey, guess what I do? I'm going to promote myself here. <laughs> what I do is, you know, help people get real specific and actually do this specifically for you. I'm not trying to cut you short, but it, it is a little intensive to go down, you know, this mental yes. exercise and, and tease it out. Got really. it. But it's really okay. worth doing. I mean, I, I can tell you it's worked for me time and time again when I've taken the time to really get in mind who it is that I'm helping. And I call it, you know, leaving a digital cookie crumb trail of evidence that points to you as somebody that can help them with that issue. Oh, beautiful. I love that. Cookie crumb. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, think about all the vast, you know, amount of content that's out there online and, you know, gosh, we owe it to people to help them out, but it's, we need to make it easy and usually by just using our own marketing speak is not the way to make it easy. We need to meet them where they are and think about, you know, if you were that CEO that had lost your vision or if you were an employee that suddenly had this, you know, childhood, um, you know, experience bubble up for you and you're like, oh my goodness, this is really, you know, taking me off my A game professionally. I mean, Sherry, I hope you don't mind a little bit of some of the things that we shared is like going through the HR people. Right. You know, who are the yeah. people within yeah. an organization that might, you know, pick up the pieces to, to deal with that lack of productivity that's unfortunately an outcome of um, somebody having this traumatic realization you know um so right. there, there usually is a way to peel back the onion and find you know your path to them and then you're kind of trying okay. to intuit their path to you and then you try to create okay. a handshake you know so that really makes sense yeah. okay thank you yeah you're welcome kathy yes before you leave this page that you're on right now can you just back up and show us where you get to this page from your yeah. link Absolutely. Yeah. You are just on your regular, you know, LinkedIn home mm -hmm. and the place where you would normally share a post or an image. There's this other option called write an article and the write an article takes you to this other sub screen. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank yeah. you. And it used to be called um, LinkedIn Pulse. I don't know if they even still refer to it as that or not, but it used to be by invite only. It was thought leaders only. So you'd have like Ariana Huffington submitting stuff. And then sooner or later, they got the, the bright idea like, hey, let's just throw it out there and let everybody do it. But they're only going to reward the good content that's number one, well-written. It's evergreen. You know, if it's about, a free webinar that you're doing tomorrow or a book launch that's just today, that's not going to be a good post because it doesn't have, it's not worth it for them to figure out where to send it because it's too short. So I would say go with this for stuff that's got some staying power, things that are always going to be good for you because it will remain attached to your profile forevermore as well. You know, try to put the gist of what you're offering in the headline and in the first 156 characters of where it says right here. Because guess what? This also gets indexed by Google. So if somebody is searching for help that's a CEO not even on LinkedIn, this article will get indexed and will be findable outside of LinkedIn. So, you know, there are just all kinds of, you know, wonderful things that can come from doing a thoughtful article. I have talked to at least a couple of you maybe not people that are on the call, but who said, you know, I've written dozens of articles and they get me nothing. I would say instead of going for volume, 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 try to do fewer, but do your thinking first of who is it for? Because as we've said, generic and vanilla just don't, they don't cut the mustard here on LinkedIn. So any other questions, all good stuff. Kathy, I just want to interject here. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank, you know, you. Thank you so much. You are you're absolutely fun. amazing. You are a wealth of knowledge and you're so patient and you're so, you just take us there. You know what you're doing. I guess it seems like you've been doing this for years and it's just so natural for you and it's, it's wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, and that's why I like coming 
in and helping because if if you don't do the stuff all the time it can just feel like launch day really i'm supposed to become an expert today and how do i do it so i just like to remove the obstacles and if it can be something that benefits you beyond launch day certainly that's great too you know yep awesome thank you well, I, I love doing it i really do obviously and I, I want to move that needle from 10 to one. I want to lose a zero right there. <laughs> I know, me too, me uh, too. I bet they should uh, refresh any time now. So I still am recording, I realize. Do you think I should stop recording? Are we about done or are there any other questions? I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what we should be addressing. I know that, you know, anybody that's going to listen to this recording, I don't know if they're going to listen to the whole thing, but you know, you address so many things, you know, you helped us with Facebook, you helped us with Twitter, you helped us with LinkedIn, you did a little bit on Instagram. Um, you know, I, I think that's, that's wonderful. You know, um, you know, the thing that I think, Kathy, is, you know, with platforms like this, there are all these options for us. You know, which do you recommend for the people specifically who are part of this book, right? They're healers um, and they have usually individual practices. What do you think is the, where are they going to get the best bang for the time that they spend? Gosh, I wish I could give one easy answer, but you know, let me, let me just go over here for a second. <laughs> I think getting to know the people that you're trying to reach, you know, that's obviously key. I use I use fishing metaphors quite a bit if you're fishing and you have it in your head that you want to catch bass but they're only perch in the lake it doesn't matter that you really like that lake you're never going to catch the fish that you want <laughs> so I think finding out a little bit about um, this is not the perfect graphic I was looking for but it, it kind of still fits I mean this is about doing your best work but I could say you could substitute doing your best marketing it's like what kind of marketing resonates with you where do you enjoy spending time like even if i tell you twitter is where where your people are but you just cannot stand twitter you're not going to do it you know um if you if i tell you blogging would be great for you but you know you're dyslexic or you hate writing since you're a co-author that's probably not your situation but you know, I, I find that sometimes. Um, maybe video is better for you, or conversely, I could tell you that YouTube would be perfect for you given what you do, but you don't wanna show your face on video. I mean, there's a formula for everybody. It's, it's kind of looking at what is your prospect need? What do you do well and what do you enjoy? And if you can actually cover content that is in alignment with, you know, on this bottom circle, I would say, instead of what people would pay for, it's how are you going to solve somebody's issue and what issue would they be willing to pay for? If you can create content that addresses that issue, that list zone is where I'm always trying to go with people. Um, so that can really look different. Part of it has to do with, um, actually, I'm going to reference the author resource page again. Um, let's see. I don't know if anybody has done the, um, yeah, this, this social media DNA series, the workbook, if you guys have, have looked at that stuff, but it basically goes through kind of the blueprint of, you know, how much time do you have? If you don't have time to blog, then I can say blogging is great, but Really, I like to reverse engineer, you know, what's your goal? If you're starting from zero, you don't have any sales funnel, you don't have any list. I actually think Twitter is great, you know, if you want to kind of do a set it and forget it kind of thing. Um, I don't know, I do better with a scenario. Can somebody be my, my, um, my representative author? <laughs> Sue, maybe you could play play that author that is like the every woman, you know? Me? Okay. <laughs> I can do that. Can you do that? Okay. Sure. Because I, I just, I really resist upon giving somebody and, you know, this is a one size fits all because you're a healer. If you're a healer that hates video, then, you know, I could give you great tips and you're not going to do it, you know? Um, so Sue... Let's just take an example. Can we pretend like you're trying to get more business for, you do Reiki, right? 
Me? No. I, well, yes, but not for, I, I don't do, I don't have a healing practice at all. Maybe it would be better to use Rachel or Sherry because they're actually doing this. Okay. Okay. Somebody, Rachel, you've been very quiet. Do you want to yeah. step up and be a volunteer? Sure. <laughs> so what would be a good goal for you? Like, a, you know, maybe three to five or six month kind of goal. Like, what would you like to see happen in your business in terms of sales or marketing? To be able to have at least five clients a day. And that would be perfect for me. Five clients a day? Yeah. Okay. And it would also be helpful if people kind of understand um, what's meant by a sales funnel. I'm not sure that I've got one of these in this package, but let me just see if I'm, I'm sure I can Google it and find one very quickly. To find, you know, five clients a day, mm -hmm. that's, that's like the action part. That's what's actually going to happen in your business. Okay. So this is where we need to like reverse engineer you know, what are your metrics that have to happen? Like we need to reach way, way more people than that on a daily basis in order to secure five that keep, you know, hopefully coming back to you more than once. Mm -hmm. um, but these are the different points that people face during, you know, their, I talk about the welcome mat. The welcome mat is pretty much like up here above awareness. Yeah. Above awareness, they don't even know about you yet. They're not aware that you can help them with their problem. Yeah. They might be Googling, you know, something online. We're talking about people that don't know you. Obviously, there are many things that you can do with people whose addresses you already have. You can remarket to them. But I'm, I'm talking about really somebody kind of starting from scratch, somebody trying to generate new business from unknown people. Mm -hmm. You need to have something that, like, brings you into, you know, brings you into their awareness so that they can contemplate is this person of interest for me? Do I want to work with them? And then do I want to pull the trigger on, you know, signing up for some kind of payback? And so you need to create perhaps a lot of awareness if you're going from zero to three. You know, if you don't have five right now per day, how many do you have, Rachel? It depends. Yesterday I had three. Today I have none. Uh, tomorrow I have one and it's it fluctuates. Okay. Well, good for you. So but you're not a zero to 60. I mean, you've got, it sounds like some pretty good traction already. Um, you know, when I was doing Reiki in Chicago, you know, I had a healing room and everything. And I kind of started out with just like some Vista print business cards. And I went around and put them in all the metaphysical bookstores that would let me, you know, cause I had nothing. And then when I got one client, um, I told that client, hey, I have gift certificates. Is there anybody that you'd like to, you know, do a gift certificate for? I'd be happy to offer that to you at a discount. You know, it's, it's five times easier to sell to somebody who has already bought from you than it is okay. to attract somebody into the top of the sales funnel. So okay. you're starting from a place of power where you could actually leverage those people that are already knowing you, trusting you, and buying from you. Mm -hmm. So we definitely do that first. Okay because they can give you a good referral that's always gonna be easier. The other thing is uh, there's something called the Pareto Principle, or the 80-20 rule. And that rule says that 20% of your clients are generally gonna represent 80% of your business. So you know, if you're kind of brand new, just getting off the ground, it might take you a while to suss out what is gonna be 20% of my business, you know, if you've only had a few clients. But after you start seeing some patterns and say, hmm, you know, I've really got some, some inroads with this niche, you know, how could I develop that more? Right? But anyway, to get five a day, start with what you've got. And I would, you know, absolutely start with the bird in the hand, start with those people that already know you and like you. Yeah. Or is there even something you can do with a payment package? Or, hey, if you buy five up front, you know, you get one free and they need to be used within the, you know, the next six months or something like that. But okay. work with what you've got. But, you know, the funnel is usually about people that don't know you yet. So let me okay. shift back to that. Reverse engineer your content and then, you know, do that work using the my persona to find out if the fish are actually in, <laughs> in that lake where you want to fish, you know, where you really enjoy fishing. Yeah. In fact, you know what, I am going to... Um, 
just put this in there too. I, I did a little YouTube video not long ago about, I called it, I did the whole big fishing analogy. It was about um, creating new business. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys all that link too. Uh, sorry. But this, I spent like an hour on this thing that I'm trying to like quickly, you know, summarize. Uh, so new business. There we go. Fishing for new business can be fun. So I did this whole thing about, you know, what I'm, what I'm talking about with you here. You know, how do you bait the hook? That's your content. Fish where the fish are. That's picking the right platform. Um, you know, how do you not scare the fish away? <laughs> you know, you don't want to come, come in with like a super huge uh, thing. But I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat. I'll also go ahead and put that in the video notes for this, this particular video that I'll be creating once this recording is done. All right. Um, yeah, but it, it is a little, it, once you've got an idea of where you want to go, it's, for me, it's not that difficult. If you never have done this before, then it does maybe seem like a lot to process. Mm -hmm. But, you know, fishing where the fish are, giving them, you know, the right information, the content is kind of like the worm on the hook. Um, mm -hmm. I really, whoops, I, this is something I kind of tried to address in the ebook with a Venn diagram. Uh, some of you, I don't know if you, if you saw that or read it, but I, I really am just obsessed with this. I think it's called Piscus vesicus. It's the, the bladder of the fish. And in a lot of you know, Christian symbology, it's the Jesus fish. If you take off, you know, these extra circles and you just look at that area of overlap, I think selling does not have to be yucky. If you just really focus on what is it that I can do? What is it that I offer? And then, you know, you really concentrate on it, on the part about what does my prospect need? And if your marketing addresses this area of overlap, it's going to be a beautiful thing. It's not going to be like forcing it at all. Okay. Shelly, hi, you're a new face on here. <laughs> nice to see you. I, I haven't even checked over there to see if we've had new people. So cool. It's kind of fun to see people in and out. And some of you have seen for the first time. So fun. Anyway, Sue, I don't know if that totally answered it. It's just, it's not a one size fits all. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I'll listen to that later on tonight and um, work from that for sure. Thank you. Is that you, Rachel? Yep. Okay, you know what? I couldn't understand that very well. I don't know if it's just me, but it's a little muffled or a little quiet. Could you say that one more time? Yeah, I said I'm very grateful and thankful for sharing that, and I will watch the video later on tonight. Thank okay, you. good. Well, I'm, I'm certainly glad. I mean, I'll just give you one example, and this is actually an example I wrote about in the book, Keys to Conscious Business Growth. I, I actually enjoy somebody approaching me and saying, all right, I don't think you can make marketing work for me. Here's my situation. I had this guy, Larry, who came to me June, four years ago, and he told me he needed a website and he needed social media and he needed to be quote unquote done by August. I was like, well, yeah, we can probably have your website done. Um, is that what you mean? He said, no, I have to go back to work. I'm the principal of a school. I have zero time to be on social media during the school year. I'm like, I don't even understand what you're talking about. <laughs> like, that doesn't even make any sense. But you know what? Larry, good old Larry, he found that his um, social media DNA was video. I mean, he was just a ham. And his company actually, um, they, they make oboe reads for like not really, really high-end oboists, but like for students. And so once we knew where he wanted to go, and we knew how we wanted to do it. I just said, Larry, you need to make videos and make them like one to three minutes in length. You know, your 80-20 Pareto principle thing is probably going to be like 80% are going to be beginning oboe players that are maybe in junior high or high school. So let's make most of your stuff for them. So he put these little playlists together, you know, for beginner oboist, intermediate, and advanced. He cranked them out. His very patient wife like transcribed all of them so 
I mean, we did this again. This is like, you can see 2013. This is quite a while ago. Um, but Judy, his wife, came down here and she basically typed up the guts of what he said five years ago, I guess it was. Um, and then we repurposed this whole thing and we put this out as a blog post as well. That's all we did. We did nothing more. He stepped away from it. He didn't have a Facebook page. He didn't have Twitter. We did nothing else. And they got 70,000 views in their first year on YouTube. And they increased their business fivefold. And it was because he really got in the head of, you know, not just the oboe player, but who's trying to teach this oboe player? It's a music teacher that's got a room full of kids that, you know, maybe only one or two of them are playing the oboe. So the poor oboist doesn't have any, you know, any help. So when a music teacher would stumble upon these, they were like, wow, it's like I got a virtual teacher that's helping me out. Um, it just it just went from there, but it really went from a true place of service and you know figuring out what it was they needed. To the best of my knowledge, he's never gone in, done any more videos, and they continue you know to succeed at that higher level. So he he really exceeded all my expectations to put in very very little effort, but well chosen, carefully crafted effort that truly was helpful. And then he was able to kind of step away. I don't recommend that, <laughs> but I think with some, you know, a lot of forethought, you can, you know, build a really good mouse trap because it's not a trap. It's, it's taking the load off of somebody and it's, you know, really, really helping. It's not really about you at that point. You're kind of trying to. Yeah, exactly. I mean, back to my sacred selling example, it is about you. I mean, cause you've got to identify the thing that you know you can do that's with you know in your capacity but it's also okay I don't know that I'm going to be able to get there we go it's it's about what you can do and then you know what does your client want and so now I can't get back to the, the overlapping circles but to me that's where the selling becomes sacred is when you're talking about what you do really well you can wear the magic wand. And sorry 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 I didn't that's know okay. that was going to happen that's okay. You're fine. You're fine. But um, anyway, you know, I, it's, it's about both. It's about meeting in the middle of the thing that you do well okay. and the thing that they need. What's your business give you plenty of freedom to spend your time doing exactly what you love to do most? Let's see. Who, I'm not sure who that is. I think I'm going to, okay. I'm not sure who that was. Okay, whoever the 408 area code was, I temporarily muted you, but you can unmute yourself whenever you're ready. You can just hit uh, star six. I think they jumped off. Okay. Anyway, sorry about that, but um, any other questions? Shelly, you just joined us kind of recently. You're coming in a little cold, perhaps. Did you have any specific marketing questions? Um, I really don't, actually. I was just kind of jumping in just to see what you were all talking about already yeah. in the few minutes. This is yeah. really interesting. Very helpful. Good. Um, yeah. I have an update. This is Sue. Yeah. Okay. We have an update. So we just moved up in the Amazon rankings. We're now number six and number seven in Yay. our two categories. Wow. Yay. Here we go. Awesome. Okay. My refresh was a little slower than yours. I had just done that. Well, that's awesome. You know, I'd love to see number one, but honestly, top 10 is pretty darn cool. <laughs> top 10 is great. And, and, you know, we are on our way to number one. I do believe that we'll get there. So, you know, it's, it's really about continuing to promote. Um, as we talked about before, it doesn't, you know, we don't have to sell thousands of books today in order to have this happen. So if all of the authors can get even a couple of people to purchase the book on Amazon, that really works for us. Um, also, we're talking about, you know, it's here on the East Coast. It's whatever time it is. What is it? 1.30 here on the East Coast. So in the West Coast, it's only 10.30 in the morning. Right. So a lot of people haven't even sent out their emails yet. Many of our partners are on the West Coast. So a lot of this is it's still going to happen throughout the day. So I feel very confident that we will reach number one in at least one of our categories. Um, but I'm, I'm super excited. This is great. Good, good. Well, I am excited too. I have... I'm going to send another email. Uh, I have not done that yet today. I was going to do that, and the day has gotten away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah. You know, Kathy, Kathy, I wanted to tell you, um, you know, I know that I think your books are going to arrive today, but because you don't have them yet, we took a picture of your thank cover you. with the other book, and oh, we sent you. it to you. Actually, Kathy Filer sent you three emails. Use thank the, you. 
latest one. So the okay. third one that we sent is the one that you can use. Maybe you want to show everybody what that looks like so they yeah. can see how to post that. I would love that. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and go here. Wonderful. So Kathy made this for me. And this is some, I don't know if I was the first one to do this um, however long ago. But I think um, you were. Was I? I just, I mean, it just. You're, you're a to pioneer me. with everything, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just, you know, what I, what I do, how I roll. But um, yeah, let me just go ahead and show you what I love to do. I think this is, this is an image that I think a lot of your friends will really enjoy. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Kathy Simple Chapter. Uh, it's just taking a picture of the open book that shows your name in print with your topic. I think it just gives you know, a little bit more context for your part. And there's just something very exciting. I know, especially for me, the very first book, the first time to see my name in print, just about made me cry. I was, you know, just so excited. And so I'm going to say, like, there's nothing like seeing the actual book. Yay! <laughs> Uh, and then I'll just say something about, you know, my chapter is about social permaculture. Uh, the ways I have blended. And I'm, I'm going to just like do this and then I'll kind of like deconstruct it to tell you the why behind it. Uh, blended my environmental self. because uh, I have like a couple of different things that I do with that. And, you know, like this 219 Green Connect page, that's mine. It's got 846 likes. And, um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that with my business, my social media coach. And that's got, you know, fewer likes because guess what? I, I like the, I guess the environment stuff better. <laughs> uh, along with my co-thrive. Oh, I time. Well, yeah, I've got a few different things here. Co-thrive time bank work through the magic of social permaculture. Now this will mean nothing, you know, to anybody outside of my, my friends and, and my whatever, but that's okay. I'm going from the sales funnel right now, the very general to the specific. I don't care if a few people get, you know, lost in the weeds. This is not meant to be something I generate for all the other authors to share. Like I'm really hoping that somebody who has had some, uh, their their past invested with me in 219 Green Connect. And I, you know, what the heck, I'm going to just play up to the crowd here. I'm going to take a little credit for Northwest Indiana Green Drinks. My marketing knows no bounds. <laughs> ah, you know what, that's, that's all right. I'm going to, I'm going to stop. That's okay. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm playing to the crowd a little too much at this point. Okay. Along with my co thrive time through the magic of social permaculture, boom. Okay, that's great. So now my friends could see this. People who, you know, know about those pages could see it. And um, it just, it, it really does truly represent why I wrote that book. My, my solution that was in the problem is that I like doing so many different things how am I going to marry this all together? And I really did that same Venn diagram exercise with my own life to say, here's the place where they all meet. And if, if I can live in this space, that's going to be fun for me. And it's, it's going to be uh, less banging my head against the wall or having it feel like work. So anyway, that feels good. We'll see what happens with that. But I expect that'll get some traction. I think whenever you can contextualize, you know, the general into your personal experience, it's more of a story. You know, it really is truly more social. And by, by tagging those pages versus just um, typing them out, it puts the people following that, that brand on notice that, you know, there, there's something about them that's happening over here that they might enjoy. So that's kind of the why. Uh, thank you, Sue. <laughs> I, thank you. Thank you so much. I really do have fun. I mean, you guys really encourage me 
to, to kind of put this all together. And it's just so fun to be learning with so many, you know, co-creative uh, healers and heart-based entrepreneurs. I love it. Me too. You know, I, I would just like to mention if I could, I know that we're doing all the social media stuff and all that. Um, the books, I know that I had sent the email the other day letting you know, and I know Sherry, you're on the call and also Shelly, both of you don't have your books today. And it looks like for, we just track them again. It looks like they're not going to arrive until tomorrow. Um, yours. Okay. Um, they were, we had our books stuck in Atlanta, Georgia, except for the Canada books. They were stuck in Atlanta for an, an extra week for whatever reason, we never got an answer, but um, you will have them tomorrow. What we're going to do, um, Kathy Filer has taken a picture of your open chapter page. Just, it'll look just like this that you see for Kathy's symbols here. We're going to email it to you now. So you can post that on Facebook or wherever you want. Awesome. Oh, great. Okay. Wonderful. You're welcome. That's good. Yeah, that, that'll be good. At least you'll have something. I apologize that they're not there. We just didn't have any control once they're on a truck somewhere, you know, <laughs> that they just got stuck. So sorry about that. This is great to have this photo though, Sue. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You know, and this is another thing that I've done in the past. I, I guess I have to go back and actually read my chapter and see if this can apply for me today. But often, you know, our story isn't just about us. It's about, you know, people that we encountered along the way or projects or people. So if, if there's anything, you know, more specifically or even somebody that was embedded in your story that maybe isn't outright mentioned, you could give them a little tag below, maybe kind of, you know, and just in the comment area. I'm thinking of the first book that I wrote for Pathways of Vibrant Health and Well-Being that was about uh, my sister, she had a brain injury, she was in a coma for a month. I mean, we had a whole community of people that came together. Sorry for the background noise. <laughs> uh, I've got work being done and right outside my window. But um, we had, you know, like doctors, nurses, people that, you know, helped out and supported us in so many ways. Of course, in my chapter, I couldn't name all of them, but I, I told them that they were in my heart and that they were part of that story. And I know that some of them bought the book because they understood, you know, what that whole thing was about. It kind of unlocked, you know, the memory of that story and, and they, they had to have it, you know. So that was um, not something they did, again, to game the system, but really they were in the story. I couldn't have written that story without all of them. They were part of it. And so I think telling people that they're part of your story is another nice way just to thank them. But out of curiosity, they're going to want to buy it, <laughs> you know. Um, so those are just a few things that have really worked well for me over the past uh, six books now. I'm just so delighted to have six books. I can't believe it. Anybody else have a question? I just unmuted myself. Sorry about that. I keep trying to talk with my mute button on and that doesn't work. Um, you know, Kathy, what you said about being in more than one book too, that that's something that's kind of special for you. I know because you have so many diverse interests and all of the topics spoke to some part of your life. So that was kind of cool for you. And don't you find too, that whenever you present them at different events, like people just didn't know this other side of you, right? They only know the mushroom picking girl or they only know the Reiki girl, right? Yeah. Yeah. I do have a lot of sides. So I have to say this becoming an author thing can get kind of addictive, you know, but in a fun, fun way, really, it's, yeah. it's a great, great feeling. And uh, yeah, and I just, I'm, I don't know, I feel blessed. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm kind of blissed out now. I don't even know what to say anymore. But uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But if, if, Anybody does need help beyond, you know, what we have here. I don't want to like sell you, sell you, but I, I do want to just tell you if you feel like, hey, this has been good, but I can't get it all. You can always find me at my social media coach, you know, dot com. And if you kind of forgot, like, what are all the different ways that you can work with me? I really try to have a, a few different ways, you know, depending on your needs, budget, that kind of thing. Anytime you can ask me for just a free 15 minute little intro call to like say, hey, what are the options again? And to do that, you just schedule an appointment. You can, you know, set up any 15 minute time frame that's good for both of us. That's totally, you know, welcome. Um, if you need more in-depth stuff, you can go into here to schedule appointment and that'll, you know, walk you through some other options. This other thing that I, I developed a few years ago, I think is a lot of fun 
it's more of a group session, kind of really what we're doing right now. I do every week for people that are in my marketing club called CoThrive. And if you have no idea if you would use that, then you can try it free for 30 days and see if it works. It's not for everybody. But um, if you think that's fun and you want to hang out, I try to make it priced more like a gym membership for your business. It's like just $30 a month past your first 30-day uh, trial. So again, I don't want to hard sell anybody, but if, if you didn't get everything you needed today, I just try to give you a few different options, uh, you know, some of them quite affordable or, or even, you know, free for the little 15 minute thing. Um, but yeah, I, I really love all you people after listening to your talks on the Telesummit. Um, I just, I know, I know I'd like to hang out. <laughs> so that's how I try to structure my whole life is how do I get to spend more time with the people that are doing great work in the world and, you know, just make it more accessible. Um, and then there's a bunch of free stuff over on my YouTube channel too, just things that I've already taped beyond that fishing thing that I've mentioned. I've got playlists that, you know, address everything from, um, you know, just creating a better online presence. I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff over here. So let me just pause again and see if we've got any other questions. Anybody? I don't have any questions, but I can plug you, Kathy. Bless <laughs> <laughs> <Just> your heart. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. And highly recommend Kathy if you, especially if you don't know how to do this stuff. She's really great, very patient, walks you through it all. It's wonderful. And, and you, you signed up for the five hour package. I think we've only used, what, three hours so far? Got two to go. You got a lot done in three hours, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. We're saving those so, last, last two to be, you know, like sharpen, sharpen the point more finely. <laughs> I mean, people can do more, but I really am, you know, about value. I'm not like a consultant that likes to keep the clock running. I don't know what it is. It's just part of me. It's like I want everybody to get a good value and feel, feel like you can afford to come back, you know, because I like you guys, <laughs> you know. I don't know if that's the right approach, but that's just how I roll. So thank right, you. Awesome. Thank you for yeah, that. That's really fun, Kathy. Like uh, this whole social media thing is kind of interesting to me because I, you know, I, I spend time on it. It's, it's really about how does, do I make my time work for me? You know, like I know we're talking about it with promotion wise today with the launch, but really it's about, you know, I, I used to, when I first got on Facebook, would spend you know two hours a day on Facebook. And then I thought, well, gosh, that's 10 hours a week that I could be, working, right? And yet, you know, I could spend those two hours working on, on Facebook because, you know, really it's about working the groups and other things. So I know that you talked today about, you know, posting on our own pages and things like that, but what about in, in groups? You know, I know there's certain etiquette, obviously, and every group has their own rules, but do you have any kind of rules of thumb for us about that kind of stuff? Yes. Um, I'm so glad you asked because I don't often bring this out for, for this group, but since you guys are like sitting very patiently through all my other tips, <laughs> this is something if people really want to get, you know, crazy with the, you know, what am I getting out of my time? This thing I can't take personal credit for developing, but another consultant that I was partnering with uh, kind of thought this up, kind of again, deconstructing what do you do? On social media um, he actually came up with this kind of thing like putting a time limit on different like micro actions that you could take on social media and we both would say you know the most important thing that you can do is set your intention what is the purpose of me spending time on Facebook because if you don't have an idea that it's actually about generating new business you certainly can you know, go all kinds of haywire, finding out all kinds of interesting things that do nothing to increase business. But um, if you kind of look at these recommended durations for activities, that certainly, you know, guides you. Um, and this, this program is something we designed for somebody that just wanted to spend 20 minutes a day being much more intentional about how they spent their time. So we've got things that are for LinkedIn, things that are for blogging, things that are for Facebook. And, um, you know, you don't have to do all of these every single day or even every single week. So on the bottom, we've got week one, week two, week three, week four. If anybody wants this, I'm not going to like 
it's, it's a little clunky to try to share, you know, through chat, but email me, Kathy at my social media coach.com and just say, I want social Jack <laughs> and I'll send you your own copy of this that you can kind of put your stuff in if you want to create a personalized game plan for you. But this really, you know, speaks to the, the sales funnel mentality. Um, you know, Rachel was sharing, she would like to have five appointments per day. If you want to have five appointments per day, then how many people do you need to talk to? You know, you're going to have to kind of adjust these numbers for you. Um, but you can, you know, do a status update and just adding friends. That could be something that actually converts for you. Different activities are going to convert differently for different people, depending on how strong you are on different platforms, how natural it feels for you. But for instance, like when you add somebody new on Facebook or even maybe more particularly LinkedIn, instead of just adding them, there's something that we kind of came up with called flipping on the ad. How do you convert that to an initial consult, you know, when you add them? There's never going to be a time when that person's more interested in you than when they're first adding you to their network. You know, don't make them two different activities. Make them one activity. Big time saver. Um, using something like Acuity Scheduler. I love this thing. This helps me so much because otherwise you're like, is Tuesday at one better for you or Thursday afternoon? And you, you can just go nuts. But with this, if I wanted to... Um, you know, get a free quick intro call scheduled. I can give this link out to anybody. All they have to do is set their time zone and they quickly and easily go into a field that's more integrated with my, uh, you know, I could be getting a call tomorrow at, or Monday at 7 a.m. It syncs with my Google Calendar. I don't have the budget or the patience to like have an admin person. I don't really need that. I just need to work smarter with technology. So this allows me to flip on the ad much more quickly. There's one part technology and then, you know, one part just strategy. So the way I tie all of this together is if uh, somebody was just asking to link with me on LinkedIn today, I've got notifications. I wonder if any of these guys are you. That would be kind of fun. If I go to my notifications and I see, you know, hey, uh, Rachel, if you follow me. You can go ahead and connect with me. That'd be awesome. Um, but if, if somebody had asked to connect, I could just, instead of connecting with them, I could say, um, oh, you did it. You did do that. Okay. So I'm going to use Rachel as an example since she's just right on here. Um, and Rachel, no pressure. I'm really not trying to <laughs> like make this a thing. Yay. Cool. Very awesome. So I will say, you know, so glad you did right? Thanks for reaching out. I, and you, you've got to really mean this, by the way. I mean, if it is just all about how can I get people in my sales funnel, that's no good. I'd enjoy, you know, setting up some time to explore possible ways we might benefit one another's business. If you are open to taking, you know, we could say 15, 20 minutes to do that, feel free to pick a time that works. You know, peace, I don't know, sounding like you is, is kind of nice. So then I put that on there and she can do that if she wishes. You know, I will tell you, I talk about that and that sacred selling or the, you know, new business development, making it more fun. And, you know, it works on me too. It's not like I just set all the, <laughs> the quote unquote fishing hooks out there. Just last month, for instance, I got, you know, I, I guess I, I have some interesting people that I connect with and sometimes I can't even remember how I connected this guy out of uh, California. He said, just saying hello, you know, very casual, LMK, let me know if you need any help with original music, tarot, astrology readings, have a good day, best, Austin. <laughs> I got to tell you, I wasn't sitting here thinking, you know what I need? 
a tarot card reading. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was just like, hey, I, I actually had some hospital issues. I, I wasn't feeling great. I didn't, you know, necessarily want to do that. But when I clicked on his profile, the thing that I saw about him was that he was just so much more than what he had represented to me. He had a great summary. He was an author, so that definitely established him as, you know, having a little bit more credibility to me. He did this great thing. Clients I typically work with are, and I would say, you know, mimic this. This is really good just to have a bullet point. And I thought, you know what? I am looking for ways to help people bootstrap a unique vocational path via crowdfunding. That was exactly in my head. So from that one reach out that he did, I bought his book, I bought his ebook, and I bought a darn tarot card reading from him. And I'm not at all sorry that I did. It was like really kind of perfect. So, you know, if he was sitting down there at his, uh, you know, social jack and saying, I'm going to reach out to people, you know, on LinkedIn that have mentioned, you know, this, that, or the other thing in their profile, maybe that's how he found me. I don't honestly know. Or you can even just work through all of your contacts, you know, work through the alphabet and just do that kind of, you know, an update. You can work through people that you haven't talked to in a very long time and work your way into more recent. Whatever you do, it's just, you know, having them in your network is one thing, but actually doing some kind of meaningful conversational outreach can really pay off. And uh, yeah, I mean, I got to say that one short reading that he did for me has actually unlocked all kinds of great stuff. So I think that was good for both of us. Crystal. Angela. <laughs> Crystal Angela. Yeah, Crystal Angela. I, I, you know, when I see Crystal Angel, I got to call you that. <laughs> you can. So, yeah, thanks for coming back. Um, you guys have any questions? Uh, I don't know if you've seen our update, but most recently we were at number six and number seven. So okay, good. I sure hope we get there during our time, but if we don't, we're going to be darn, darn close. Do we have like a, a deadline to, to, to meet? No, I just hope to do it like within, you know, my time okay. that I had scheduled. And tell me again, Sue, that's, what time is your call? Your call is in? Our call is at three o'clock. So very shortly, uh, about an hour. Right. And so I was going to end in about 20, 23 minutes, something like that. Yeah. And we may or may not have another update before then. This one updated at about um, 40 minutes after the hour. So we'll see. Yeah. So Angela was going to do some energy work yeah. on the actual book. How did that go? It went okay. I mean, you, we picked up some of the people's emotions in there that we released. There was a disconnection between the, um, the actual book and our target audience. So it wasn't doing as well as we wanted it to. So I made the connection. So let's see what happens. See now that just that excites me right there. Cause I'm talking about all this marketing speak, but <laughs> the energy of it in, I'm, I'm fascinated yeah. and I want to know more about that. So, yeah, I really do actually want to talk to each and every one of you, not to like sell you something, but really to find out like, how would we layer that on with what I do? So please, please reach out. And you know, my 15 minutes or if you want to go longer, believe me, I'll go longer. <laughs> but I, I really want to explore that. Like how would right. we insert you into somebody that was trying to clear obstacles with their sales funnel to me that would be a beautiful thing yeah well it works for everything and anything yeah. Yeah. right 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 rochelle rachel yeah i bet it does yeah we know that that's really cool yeah. that's awesome well i love it i love it so i guess we can just keep sitting here and staring at the screen or i can keep talking <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think I've given you my mostly my greatest hits, but um, yeah, it's it's all going to be you know. I guess I could probably stop recording. I'm going to go ahead and do that because I think we're not getting into anything new.